Okay, welcome to the demonstration <laughs> of plan projection perspective for the IND 107 perspective and rendering course at Harper College. Set up your paper. Uh, if you have 12 inch trace, two sheets stacked uh, one on top of the other, uh, you can tilt the table if you like, if that's more comfortable. I like to put a piece of 11 by 17 copy paper underneath it so I can see the drawing more clearly. First step, up near the top of the tray, about a half an inch from the top maybe, put a line, and you also remember you need to secure everything to the table so that things don't shift. Put this line along the top, that is the picture plane, I'll abbreviate that P, P. All right. Then I take the floor plan that I'm going to draw, and this is a very elementary floor plan, just architecture and uh, windows. I want to be facing this direction, so I'm going to put the plan in here almost upside down, and I want this corner, the farthest corner that I'm going to, uh, that I can, that is, I guess it would be visible in the um, space. I want that running, the picture plane running through that point. This point is marked A. All right. The angle of the plan can be, you know, it can vary. I'm going to leave it about like this. I'm going to double check to make sure. Uh, I'm not going to secure it yet. I want to create a station point, um, which is where the viewer is standing in the image. I'll put the station point down here. Mm, where was I before? I think that was like. There. That's good, like that. I don't. When I if I do this, and I have station point there. Wherever you put your station point, the view of the drawing is going to be directly vertical or perpendicular with the picture plane. So if you want to look over this way, then you need to rotate the plan. Plan accordingly because from the station point, you need to create vanishing points and that will work. Your vanishing points are created 90 degree angle from the picture or from the station point. And I just need to make sure that if I position the plan and then I go to draw my put my vanishing points in that they're gonna be on the paper. So this will work. And since I can see that that will work, then I will tape my plan down. right there and right there. So you can have the plan positioned slightly differently from person to person. This will still work. So just as long as it's close. And uh, there are, in this book, the first chapter of Perspective for Interior Designers by John Pyle, it does have a step-by-step -step kind of uh, I guess, demonstration of this. Um, I found that in the past that students looking at it need a little more information than what he includes. So it's not perfect, but it can be a helpful resource. I also find that once students learn it, they tend not to need the book anymore. But if uh, we can also maybe make some photocopies of that and uh, if you uh, would like to have that, why not? He's a generous guy. He doesn't care. Uh, I didn't say that. We're not stealing, John. All right, so we have the um, station point is here, just like a dot, and it is the old like architectural graphic is really of a person seen in plan view. So that's your head and your shoulders. Okay, so plan is set up. It's secured. 
we have the picture plane drawn. Now I'm going to draw the vanishing points, and to locate the vanishing points, I go a 90 degree angle from the uh, station point. So I'm going to draw parallel to the architecture from the station point, and here's that looks pretty good. It's an approximation. I'll go up to the picture plane. That's the left vanishing point. You don't necessarily have to draw a solid line all the way up. Uh, that once you start projecting um, edges in the uh, in the perspective, uh, the more lines you have, the harder it is to see things. All right. So we go right angle here. Uh, I find it's easier to use like the longer edge, the hypotenuse of the triangle, and line it up with this edge of the architecture, rather than to do like balance the corner of this on there because it can be a little hard to see it. So you do have to learn to trust your eyes a little bit. That's pretty good. There. So. That's the right vanishing point. Good. Now, down below, this is where our drawing is going to occur. Somewhere around a little more than halfway up that sheet. I'll draw a horizontal line. This is my horizon line, or HL. That's eye level in the drawing. Once I have the horizon line, then I can bring my vanishing points down. So anything that intersects the picture plane, any mark that is being projected from the floor plan, intersects the, the uh, picture plane, it can be brought down into the drawing. So here, my triangle, it's a little bit short, so I'm going to do like that. Right there, that's the left vanishing point, lift that so it doesn't roll up the dots, that. no, there we go, make sure that is flat, there, there we go, right vanishing point, and all right, there we go. So I've got my horizon line and my vanishing points that correspond to the uh, station point. Now I'm going to bring the first uh, part of the architecture down the corner right here. So that's already uh, intersecting the picture plane, so I can bring it down there. All right. The initial line that I draw is going to be longer than I actually need it to be. So this represents the corner. You can see up here this is a plan in 3-8 scale. And so the, this has to be in 3-8 scale too. The perspective has to match the scale of the plan. Um, otherwise, um, the heights and the widths will not correspond to each other. I've seen the drawing, it looks weird. And one thing you don't want is to make weird drawings. Eh, weird drawings are okay. But more for fine arts. Okay. So a 3-8 scale, I'm going to set the scale up using the 3-8 uh, side here. Uh, the eye level is 5 feet 6. So I will set this up. I'm going to put there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to have the horizon line in it right there in between five and six. Then I'll put, there's zero. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's a nine foot ceiling that we have for this plan. Um, I put tick marks at one foot because I'll use them. Uh, my line I drew down coincidentally was like right at zero. I've got extra above nine feet, so I'll take that off. 
So that is a 9 foot line in scale for 3 8 Next, I'm going to draw the architecture. Uh, so these two walls, um, what I'll do is draw from the vanishing point, like the right vanishing point will give me the left wall. So and we'll line this up and as I, I recommend you put your bed holder or mechanical pencil on the vanishing point, slide the triangle to it, rotate it so that it lines up with the base of the wall. And there's that. Same with the top. And there's that. Um, I think I'll be okay leaving that at that length. And then for the the right wall, I use the left vanishing point. I want that to be a little bit longer. I'll line it up, move my pencil up farther up the scale or up the triangle without moving the triangle. Then I can shift that and that'll line up with where the vanishing point is. There. And you want to make this as precise as possible. It, uh, you, know, you can get away with uh, a little bit of inaccuracy, but uh, I think, oh, wrong way. All right, so here's a tip. When you're going to draw, watch out for your things bashing into the horizontal bar there. So this way. That way. There we go. Ta da! This wall is that one. This wall is that one. Now, once we have the vanishing points and some architecture drawn, now we can start projecting things. So the uh, projection is when you start from the station point, or S, P. There's a corner right here. I'm going to ignore these little saloon doors or whatever they are. There's a, the thickness of the wall here. There's, there are two corners, one there, one there. So pencil on station point and then I line it up with the corner here. And then I go up to the picture plane. And then I do the back one. They're really kind of close together. I'm going to do my best to get a line drawn from this corner and this corner. And they're up there. Uh, if, you, if you have a complex plan and you start getting like a lot of um, a lot of points projected up there. It's usually a good idea to start labeling them. Let me get my uh, bar up here. In this case, I don't think so. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to project this up and then bring it down. It's going to give me the edge of that wall. It'll show me where this ends. Okay, and there, and again, if you have a shorter triangle, you can just like put a mark there, slide this over, put a mark there, bring this down like that, line that up like that, slide the triangle to it, and that will give me the closer corner. The second line gives me the farther corner and that'll give me the thickness of it. Initially, when you bring it down like that, you can see it's two parallel vertical lines giving me the thickness. I need the perspective of the thickness. The top and the bottom of that wall will angle from the front corner to the vanishing point like that. So you don't want to just leave it. Um, There. 
and there. Ta da! What do you think? Okay so far? Yeah. Good. So, what I did there, that's the projection. You project from the station point through a corner in the plan, and then you go up to the picture plane, and then you bring it down. It gives you the width in proportion, like when, like this is coming closer to me, and so scale is expanding on that wall as it comes closer to me. And so the projection gives you the proportionate, different, uh, I guess, uh, change in scale. Um, come here, you. All right, so here, there's a window opening right there. Uh, right now, you don't have heights for things uh, in the drawing that we have here. The example you see it is a window above the kitchen sink, so it's not it's not going to go floor to ceiling. But here, I will go from station point through corner up to the picture plane, and then station point. Should I? Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Hmm. There's a frame here. Yeah, it's okay. There's going to be a, a, there will be an edge there. I think um, even just to show you like the the thickness of the wall. This is going to be obscured, uh, but I'm going to show you that anyway. There. So this will be the window opening without the um, any of the. Uh, yeah. All right. So now you see how this like it radiates and spreads and gets wider. That's what's going to give me the um, difference in width. Okay, so like there. There. So if I do these in groups, then I, I can just keep them projected part way down and keep them organized. So there is that. There. And that. Give me some idea, like what should be the like distance from the like I guess what should be like the top of that window? Four feet. Four feet. So four feet from the floor. Okay. Four feet from the floor. One, two, three, four. There. Forty-four inches. Okay. So four is pretty close. So from the vanishing point, I line it up with four feet in that corner, and then I draw across the wall. There. Uh, how tall should this window be? Interior designers. I can't hear you. Four. Four feet? Four, so eight. Top will be eight feet. It's like tall and just one top. It's going to be fine. Okay. Well, you're designing this, so. Mm -hmm. All right. There. There's the window opening. Um, from here, I can, I'll be able to see the thickness. So, like this is this opening with you know with no window, no glass, no aluminum. I'll draw down to the vanishing point, and here. Don't make it bad. Yeah, 
and they go a little longer. Um, just in terms of clarity, you don't always have to erase everything right away. So there's the thickness of the wall. Sometimes if you don't get the your pencil right on the correct intersection, it can be a little bit uh, things can come out a little bit goofy looking. That's better. So that is that. I'll do one more thing. I want to see where this ends. Uh, it's oh, you, know, you wouldn't. Like this, you can see here's the here's the viewer, and to the right of the viewer, that corner is actually like a, you know a little bit. It's like way in the peripheral vision, but I want to see where it is so I can show that this kitchen does not just go on forever. So again, I will project. Put pencil on the uh, station point, uh, pivot it so that the triangle intersects B right there and that is B and then So that's where this corner of the room would be. We have another um, more complex plan that you'll get to use after you do this one that has uh, wall cabinets, lower cabinet, it's got an island in it. So this is like, this one's gonna be practice. So if I wanna draw this and you'll see in this a slightly different spot, but you see like the, oops, there's a mistake. This kind of like radiates out past the, you know, so like coming, really it looks like it's coming behind the viewer. I just want a little bit of that. There. And there, and you know, once you have, um, when you have uh, the lower cabinets, uh, the wall cabinets in there, you like all that's going to come closer. Yeah. Hmm? Now, why not do the same on the other side of that wall that you just did here with those two lines? Over here? Um, why not? I could. I think if it, it helps if you have. Um, Oh, that's way out there. Oh, because you're not incorporating that whole wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the reasons to do to do that with this wall is that if you like, this has the um, the countertop that comes closer, so like starts to like that wraps around. There's a there's a doorway here. I think this is like, like a, an exit from the kitchen there. Um, you know, we might put. Um, cute little folding doors or something like that. Everyone that you have, it's, it's going to be a like Old West saloon kitchen. That's your theme. Ew. I'm kidding. <laughs> Don't. No, you could if you wanted to. It's like Mae West sitting in there. Um, all right. So that's like just like bare bones. You got this opening. Um, you know, here, there are more edges to project for the window frame. I can go like the next ones, like there. And 
there, and that's going to be, yeah, I just have to keep track of those. I might not need both of them, I might only need one. Yeah. That guy. So there. That will give me the thickness of that frame right there. And if I and I don't really need this back one projected, I can just go back. to the, oops, the far edge of the opening. It's a little hard to see that. Come here. Good. And those, if I'm drawing that accurately, those will line up right there. So, this will give me the thickness of that piece. Um, if I'm already, if I'm going to get that edge moving in, um, I need, yeah, like I need this. I need, I do need to know the opening uh, before I like place that in there. Um, I could just start like using those two corners instead of those two corners to do the opening, and then just put that extra edge in, which would give me that there. Um, multiple ways to do it. What I want to do, you know, like if I want to like project this, I think, um, yeah, so you can keep projecting like corner, corner, corner for the frame, the, the like, the little like bit that holds the glass. So, this is doing that switch. Thank you. I would like you to try make an attempt of that at this over the week, and we will see <coughs> just how it goes, and we will work on it. Are we ready to wrap it up here? I'm getting Thank the director you. is giving me the signal to, to like. <laughs> I'm Sam Rowling. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.